Now today I wanted to talk about an EPR valve. Yes, an EPR valve, an evaporator pressure regulating valve. That's what that stands for, evaporator pressure regulating valve. Like the name implies, it's gonna be used for the evaporator. It's gonna control the pressure in the evaporator. But before we get to that, let's, let, let's look at the refrigeration cycle. We know that we're gonna have the liquid line like this. Liquid line comes out and it goes up to, let's say, your metering device right there. From the metering device, it's gonna go on over to an evaporator. This evaporator is gonna come out and it's gonna go right on over to, let's say, a compressor. The compressor compresses it, sends it out on over to the condenser, and then it goes out the liquid line and we're on this side here. Okay, so now let's say that this compressor has a suction pressure of let's say 32 PSIG. Okay, 32 PSIG, that means that if this is R22, now I'm talking about R22 right here, if it has 32 PSI suction, what that means is that the evaporator is going to be 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Because this is a refrigeration system, we're gonna keep things very, very cold in there. So now we're maintaining this <coughs> evaporator at 10. But you can't have a compressor for just this, a compressor for another one, and for another one. So what they do is they come off of here, they go to another metering device, and this metering device is gonna come out go of course to an evaporator like this, and this evaporator is gonna be hooked up to that. Now this evaporator, when we're looking at this, suction pressure is 32, that gives me 10 degrees, 32 here, 32 PSIG evaporator, that gives me 10 degrees eva 10 degree evaporator too. Well, we don't want that. We don't want that because we want to maintain something else there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an EP, our valve right here. This evaporator pressure regulating valve <clears throat> is gonna back up the refrigerant. <clears throat> it's gonna back up the pressure in here. And because of that, we're going to maintain this pressure. Now let's say, mm, let's say 57. So now we maintain it at 57 PSIG. When we look this up in the PT chart, that tells me that 57 cross references to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that tells me that now this evaporator or this box is gonna be at 10 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is gonna be at 32. So now we're maintaining two different temperatures right here. Well, that's, that's great because now we're saving money or the company's saving money so that they don't have to buy too much equipment. Then what they could do is they come off of here and go to another metering device here and from here, they're gonna go straight on over to another one, and then this one's gonna come out and hook up to that. If we leave it like this, <clears throat> we're gonna have a 10, a 10, and a 32, <clears throat> 32 degree evaporator right here. But we don't want this, at least maybe we don't, maybe we do, maybe we don't, but here, what we're gonna do in this example, we're gonna put another EPR valve right there because we put another one, we're gonna raise the pressure in this evaporator to let's say 68. Now remember, we're dealing with, in this example is R22. 68 cross references to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we have one, two, three boxes that are being maintained at different temperatures with the same compressor, the same condenser, same liquid line right here. And we can do this by having the evaporator pressure regulating valves on here adjusted to different pressures to give us, to give us different temperature boxes, different temperature evaporators. So we could actually add another one here as long as the compressor can handle the load. 
as long as this compressor can handle all of that refrigerant, yes, we can keep adding more onto here. So this is an example as to how the EPR valve works and where you may see it and how they are going to be used. So make sure that um, you keep this in mind. Again, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. And make sure you like the video, go to YouTube, and follow me on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you on another video. If you have any suggestions, make sure you send them to me, and I'll make some other videos for you. All right. Thank you.